Hey people, it's Sunday now, and I guess that's how I start my, sh my, my, my videos. What's going on people? How you doing? As Roger Coleman will up and say, cheers. I want to start the video by saying, folks, that uh, the VC is still a real thing, and the way that the vinyl community works is that there are no rules, and no one in particular started it. There are people who claim the vinyl community who have never met each other, and that's fine. Whatever anyone who does as a vinyl community member is on them, you know. I think the main thing is that we have this shared love of music and the art form of records and other ephemera. I'm saying this because I recently looked through my subscriptions list and unsubscribed a bunch of people who are no longer active, as well as just a lot of people where... I support the idea of the BC still. I don't uh, realistically sp hardly spend any time watching other videos. Every now and then I'll catch up with someone. It, it, this can be interpreted as not being connected, but that's not the case. And I want to say it that way. VC forever. Do flag, you know, let your VC flag wave high and just do your thing. And um, I didn't start it, and I'm not the head of it. And But I know that when I speak, people seem to pay attention. And so I'm saying, however you're um, involved in the vinyl community or sharing your love of music and records, just do it. If you want to do it, do it, you know. And... Um, Every now and then people will send me a link and say, I really want you to watch my video, and I'll try to. Um, and honestly, depending on what's going on in the video, I'll sit all the way through it. A lot of times I don't, you know. It's nothing personal. It has most to do with my interest level, you know. I do understand that's partially why some people like to watch me is because they find the way that I talk is rather animated or I keep them interested. All I can tell you is I keep myself interested, so I guess that's how it works, huh? I told you I wanted to talk a little bit, uh, talk about records for practically everyone. Matt Polkowski, I'm going to shout you out and thank you again. Your label is interesting. Now, I just got up, started drinking coffee, and like I say, a lot of times I don't prepare like I probably ought to. So, the, But the records are all sitting right down here, so I just have to... Um, just get them here and get them ready to talk about, okay? Um, I'll share this, that uh, last week I was happy to um, ch play more. I was happy to play some uh, more um, stuff from the label. I played uh, Nicole Mitchell. Well, I'll get to that. I played, I played the um, Sinosopro, and that this blew everyone's minds at the station, all the other fellows who were working that day. A lot of times the crew who are have a show before mine, they're done for the day, but they stay because they want to listen to what I brought and vibe with me and Paul in the, in the, uh, in the uh, studio because Paul Allen and I, my co-host on the show, uh, we're both music nuts, and we come from long-standing musical families. Paul Allen's grandfather is the one who opened Allen's Showcase, where everyone from Miles Davis to Chick Corea to you name it has played there, including me. So we both really got off on this. Uh, Sinus Opro, this is excellent. I'll be playing more of this. So it was my initial reaction to those records that Matt sent me that got me thinking, hmm, this is an interesting label. And he offered to send me some more stuff. So I'll tell you what I can about these. I need to listen to them all more, okay? First one up is, and I played this. I played some of this. Nicole Mitchell's Black Earth Ensemble, Intergalactic Beings. This is a live recording based on a work that she put together based on a book, a science fiction book about uh, a dystopian future. It's a very interesting premise. There's a real parallel, actually, to, I say, a real parallel in 
in the, what happened to um, my uh, ancestors as slaves, you know, where they were in an element out of their control and were forced to do things like mate and just all sorts of things. Anyway, this music, Nicole Mitchell is a flautist, and this is um, a mixture of funk, jazz, improvisation, uh, impressionism, uh, I mean, everything from elements of Sun Ra to um, Tortoise, because Jeff Parker plays guitar on here, to um, elements of Meredith Monk and Laurie Anderson with the uh, vocal vocal uh, work on here. I played this all the way through, and I had um, a friend over when um, I was playing it, and it caught their attention. Nicole Mitchell's Black Earth Ensemble, someone I think that more people need to find out about. Black Excellence. That's something we talk about on the radio show is Black Excellence because we're still fighting against the, um, the deep-seated um, uh, problem of white privilege and blacks being seen as second and somehow having to work harder to measure up. Black Excellence is excellence. And that's what I try to show through the radio station, in particular when I feature black, black artists. But we're all one family. I wish the you ignorant folks could kind of get with that. I know that some of you folks watching this don't agree with me. Family, a man is one. Here's another Ethiopian um, group that he uh, released, Debo Band. Ere Gobez. And this has a lot of vocals and ensemble playing. Uh, one I will come back to. I don't know the language, so I'm not sure what they're singing about, but the general feeling of this is up. Not like, not like Fela. This, Fela has an edge. This is, seems to be joyous. Let me take a look at one of the titles to see if that will give me a clue. Like I said, folks, I need to listen to these more. I listened enough to tell you that in particular, this African stuff that uh, FPE is putting out and and uh, Sinusopro, that stuff really impresses me. And the Nicole Mitchell, that stuff really impresses me. So I really want to push this stuff. I'd like to encourage you folks to discover these are artists. Debo Band. The other records he gave me are... Um, this is what I... Now tell me, Matt, if I got this right. It appears to me that your label is based on personality. Um, because the the variety of music is, is fairly wide, and it seems to me, after listening to these next artists, that part of what you like about them is their personality. Because here is Miss Lana Rebel and Kevin May Michael Mayfield. Okay? This is called the Midtown Island Sessions. Thank you for sending it to me, but you know I have to be honest. This is Americana country music. These people are probably really nice people, and probably if I saw them live, I'd really enjoy the feeling. However, I am not interested at all in roots in country music, so when I put it on, I immediately lose interest because I know what they're going to do musically. Now, on the back here, this writing, which reminds me of a record from the 50s and 60s, it's, you know, it's a mixture. I haven't read everything, but it seems to be talking about psychedelia and um, taking mushrooms. So, there might be something in the lyrics related, but as I to told you, I don't listen to music for the lyrics. It's the music first. So my honest assessment of this is that folks who like Americana, folk music, country music, this lady and these people, they sound like they're really, they, they play well. And there's a good feeling, I can tell you that. As soon as I put it on, there's a good feeling being uh, released by the sound of the music, okay? So discover this if you're interested in that sort of thing. Miss Lana Rebel and Kevin Michael uh, Mayfield. 
That's why I say this is a complete contrast to the African and the Sinosopro on FPE. That makes me think that to a degree, um, Matt signs people or puts out records based on liking them as people as well as what they do. I'll do this one next. I have to really listen to this one. This one I'm the least uh, impressed with or the least interested in at first. That doesn't mean it's not good. And it doesn't mean that I won't get into it. Zigtebra. Um, a couple, it appears that they're half brother and sister, the brave. This is a uh, kind of um, what I call kind of plinky plonky indie pop music where what they're talking about and entering, excuse me, into what's going on with them is as important as the music. I get that because I play with a lot of musicians like this where the music is really personal and it's their world that they want you to enter. I get that feeling about this record. And so I imagine that there will be a time when I put this on and the time will be right and I'll really like this, okay? That's how I'll put this, Zig Tebra. Next band, he sent me two um, uh, items by and I need to listen to these guys more, but I like this as opposed to like having to work to like the Zig Tebra. The Miami Dolphins, this is their album, Becky. This comes off to me somewhere in the area of like the membranes or the slits. Noisy rock with a whole lot of who these people are coming through. It can sound like a bit of a mess at first, but a good, a good mess. He sent me a single by them too. If the references that I mentioned to you is the kind of stuff that you like, kind of noise, um, so let's keep coming to mind. All of these records, and this label is well worth all of you music listeners uh, discovering. I want to give you a kudo and all other small record labels who are willing to risk putting out music by people that they like who do have something in their music because this is what's been lost on the mainstream industry decades ago. The bottom line became profit to the point of destroying art. Seriously, there's a lot of pop music and popular music that has really destroyed, in my opinions, in my strong opinion, has destroyed our ability to appreciate art, higher art, and to think better. It just shoves shit down our throat and people accept it. So kudos to for practically everyone records and other indie record labels that are trying to put out real music, not just product to take your money. The bottom line of profit has really ruined uh, modern life in so many ways. If you're winning and you're rich, of course you don't agree with me. But that's a small number of people compared to the large number of people who are struggling just to make it. Others who aren't even making it are on the street, starving. The corporate bottom line is not a is not good. And I just I'm gonna say it, you know. We can't fix what we don't want to face, okay? And even though I'm, you mainly came here to hear about music, and I'm sure there's somebody complaining, well, I don't want to hear this stuff. But if you're still listening, I'm glad you're listening because you need to think about it, okay? We're all in this together, and the things that we all do make a difference. And you folks just watching TV or sitting on your asses and not doing anything, you're affecting it, you know? So it's not passive. You don't... We're all in this together. That's my perspective. Remember, it's just my opinion. So again, if you don't like it, just realize it's just Derek saying what he thinks. I don't know. This is what I see. It's on, people. It's on. It's on. It's already. It's on. Do I love it, people? I love it. I love it. The response to my music, I love it. These are already flying out. I love it. 
I am down to absolutely, this is the last spare copy of, uh, I might even keep it, okay? This is the last copy that I'm willing to sell at this time, okay? Because they're all, all I sold one at my gig last night. It wasn't even my gig, it was a Scudder gig. We didn't sell any Scudder CDs, but I sold records last night and t-shirts. I'm blown away and thankful, very thankful. So, if you want this, it's available through my web, my blog site, but I'm telling you, and this is not just bullshit, I might just keep this, okay? So, if you think you want it, you, you know, <laughs> order it, okay? That's real. The fact that I might keep it, that's real. That's not crap. That's not some sales pitch bullshit. That's real. Okay, guys, I've been talking for a while here. Thanks for the comments back on the Brian Ferry and Roger Simonson. Good to hear from you. Um, like I said, I um, uh, researched Mr. Ferry's uh, latest tour before I went, you know, and so even though it's just my perspective, but I, I do think it's a uh, pretty. It appears to be pretty true that he's been taking it easy on his voice most of this tour. Um, yeah, people, I'm glad that you enjoy. Um, me uh, sharing things that are important to me. Music is really important to me. It really does bring richness to life. It really does. Okay, I could just talk. I got that feeling, but I better stop. 